Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl, Kren K. K. Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Uh, so it is the 8th of May, 2024. But it's actually the 7th because I'm hopping into the next day. It's the wee hours of the morning. It's actually 3 a.m. That needs to stop. Uh, but I was sidetracked. So basically, this hair, me redoing my hair, it's like a total mess. You can see it. I'm replanting it and it's just taking up so much of my day. But somebody gotta do it. Um, if not me, then who, right? So next week, life will probably be a little easier because I'm not gonna have that taking away my time. Let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God not very reverential they sometimes are misspelled etc one day god willing in the future i will adjust them uh and then next up i'm very potentially wearing app makeup if i am you'll know if i'm not you'll also know because then it bounces off my face yeah it's an app no need to get all hectic then i have a segment i really want this to be out the way quickly because i hate that it's the time that it is but let's just get straight into it i pinch my cheeks to display that i'm human and when you prick me i bleed because guess what i've got blood the hope is to blush my cheeks to achieve that goal and i think it just worked good the sooner i can get that out the better already cool beans and bananas like if you roll me over with a steamroller i'll pass i'll probably pass away guys today's been a horrible day okay it's been exceptionally terrible but um i found a punching bag a punching bag and it's called exercise uh yeah i i, I just pushed myself a lot more and it helped uh yeah but it, it did not what what generally helps is a combination of exercise and this so yay uh we're here now we're having a discussion so I'm getting so many nightmares, like I'm getting so many dreams about what people are doing and they're doing what they're doing because uh, I, I don't know, like it appears that I'm, I think I'm going somewhere. I haven't really been checking my analytics, I don't know, but yeah, it's exquisite and the stuff I see is, who, yo, like, oh my goodness, like, whoa, uh, anyway, so complete uh, stranger did this to me uh was sent no they didn't do anything to me but these are the the spells that they cast the thing about sorcery is that when you uh when you're afflicted by it if you're a dreamer if you're a seer uh like me when you do get the dreams um <clears throat> sorry when when the affliction comes when the attack manifests you get like your body you're, you're tired you're fatigued kind of foggy and sometimes it really messes with your heart like you get just sad like really sad and today i was attacked by just feelings of sorrow but like i said i have a punching bag exercise helped significantly in the beginning i was flat <sighs> Sorry, um, in the beginning of working out, I was flat, but then later on, I just, I, I conquered, I broke past something, but not entirely. Uh, let me help you understand what, okay, so uh, my, I had a dream involving my former best friend, and then some dude that I used to go to varsity with, some guy that turned up gay, uh, so I don't know why he's harassing me like this. My cousin, uh, one of my cousins, not the main one that I'm always talking about wreaking havoc, but another one with um, an immediate family member of mine uh, interjecting the words that I'm speaking that I might not finish and I ended up just walking out the room. But let me tell you the dream that has gotten me this flat. I had a dream of like, oof, guys, I saw, I saw what looked like a wasteland that was burning. It, it was... There were coals all around it, um, but some of the coals were like kind of depleted. Like you know how when you burn wood, when, no, sorry, when you burn coals, how it is that um, if the the fire goes out early, some of the coals. <sighs> sorry, it's the time that it is. Some of the coals are um, are not. They're still kind of black. They have not gone uh, ash gray or whatever because fire hasn't gotten to them this environment had that color of coal and it had some coals that were like that but the whole ecosystem just looked charred and i, I had a comprehension that it was um it was hot as well uh and it was a wasteland like a dump site a place where people thank you um thank you thank you the lord actually brought it to me a place where where people illegally dump stuff like they're not allowed to do it by the government there are places to dispose of it like a place like basically a person deciding that they don't want an old couch and so they throw it away at this side to making sure nobody's watching and it's like illegal to do that uh because there are rules you know what i mean mm, this place was like Ugh. sorry it was like an illegal dump site and you know what else it looked like so there was a time when i was watching the flash right uh i pretty much have depleted all the seasons and you guys know that barry ellen and iris have 
a daughter that came from the future and in one of the seasons of the flash she pretty much perished like she died uh, or her version in the past was being wiped off the timeline altogether and it was a very sad time because there was no reinstating that particular nora ellen um and after that in the following season iris as a mom that was bereaved i guess went to like a dump site yeah a dump site to go and find a jacket that nora used to like wearing and it was thrown away by by mistake like somebody just decided to throw it out with the trash and <sighs> and iris did not intend to throw this away she didn't intend i'm sorry if i'm yawning all so much it's because I literally pushed myself to failure with exercise today just to basically conquer what is happening like this um, uh, affliction like these guys yo like yeah, spiritual yo, the darkness okay the darkness anyway let's just uh, carry on right talking I don't need, like nobody listens to me that's a, just a sad thing because I'm sharing what in the world is go but I guess I'm very severely uh, afflicted precisely because of my spiritual gifting and the stuff I share Anyway, Iris goes to this dump site to locate this jacket uh, that that her daughter had when before she disappeared on the timeline because somebody threw it away by mistake and she located it. She she did find it. So she was basically a misplaced woman in a dump site searching through all different kinds of heaps of rubbish just to find this jacket as some kind of memorabilia for the daughter that was no more. Okay, and my dream the dump site they're in was like that it, it, it was similar to the one where iris was looking for nora's jacket yeah and however it was also i had an understanding in my heart that it was a place where people go to illegally dump stuff they're not supposed to dump there it's against the law if they get caught they get arrested right uh they get fined whatever happens yeah uh and y'all it was burning it was hot so all this garbage was being burnt all this rubbish was essentially there was an intention to eliminate it from the face of the earth that nobody might find traces of it nobody might find evidence of it uh but the stuff did not burn because the fire did not get to some of the coals right it, it was largely made up of black charcoal this environment it was hot the fire was snuffed out but it was still hot sort of kind of steaming it was a, a, an illegal dump site and it also gave the feel of that scene in in the flesh where iris was looking for something that was not supposed to be thrown away because her daughter nora had disappeared from the timeline and she was bereaved she was bereaved okay guys if i tell you what i s oh goodness you know people in the occult like i do not know why you think you're going to be fine like my former best friend was involved in this witchcraft and so too was some stranger on the internet that i don't even know and it's recent the spell that was cast is recent so my former best friend already pulled the rug from under my feet long ago so if i'm busy dreaming about all this stuff afresh it's it's a it's it's recursing it's an it's a spell to basically make sure that something does not get resurrected to make sure that what's dead is really dead it's like putting a third bullet in a skull that's already uh, belonging to a person that's already late just to make sure that they're dead that's what this witchcraft was as for the stranger on the internet it's like chick whoa um what the heck like i just i don't understand it, it, it's like bitter people that try really hard to disprove god or to not feel bereft upon discovering that god has always been there he was worthy to be trusted they didn't trust him and now they have to deal with the ramifications of their actions but upon then have when then however they 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 happen into this understanding instead of repenting they worsen the likely outcome of the ramifications it's like they are already facing comeuppance and then they they just add insults to their own injuries by adding more dirt on their plate piling more accusations against themselves and now my former best friend is was i can't really speak for what's the present state of her mind a professing christian if you're a professing christian you think you're going to heaven what the heck how do you how how can you do a ritual like this and thoroughly envisage that you're going to heaven i don't understand what is the thought process the rationale behind people in the occult you see that's just the problem about reading the bible like it's a pamphlet just taking one scripture here and there and then you're running with it putting it as a badge on your shoulder and that's just about it like an accessory approach when you don't read the whole context and again 
never mind reading the Bible as a pamphlet, but also just attending crap churches. Attending just horrible, horrible churches where preachers are comforting dead men and women, lost souls, that they're going to heaven when they're not. Like at Rayma, after Whitney Houston died from a drug overdose for crying out loud, they were busy talking about how the woman has been restored to God, she's with Christ now. And I'm not out here trying to judge Whitney Houston. Don't nobody know what was going on with her at time of death. Nobody is saved by works, but by works, you, re you basically can gauge the fruit of a person's life as to whether or not they were saved. And so Whitney Houston was highly unlikely saved at death. So the church should have just kept mum. They should have just kept quiet. They should have just shut up about it if they didn't want to be taboo. But the fact that they went and counseled a, 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 a church con parishioner set that Whitney Houston was in heaven, the fact that they went and comforted them with that basically caused some of them to go home and continue taking drugs, go home and continue fornicating, go home and continue doing whatever it is that are their debauched lifestyles and anticipate that they're going to be okay because after all, Whitney Houston is okay. When you pamper dead men, in their deadness, claiming that they're alive, you condemn them further. You are a cloud without rain, shepherds that scatter the sheep, and you will be made to account you're the unrighteous branch. The Lord's wrath rests heavily on you more than even those false sheep, those goats that gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. You can't just blame the pastor. Ray McCauley was the one preaching on that day. You can't, however, just blame the pastor. At the end of the day, you have your own conscience and the invisible qualities of God that are all over creation. At the end of the day, you have God, your own viewpoint, your own understanding, like, it, like frankly, just put yourself in God's shoes. What would you do with you? What under heaven would you do with you? If at all, you can't put yourself in God's shoes because that's just too awesome to fathom, then put yourself in the shoes of a parent if you are one. Having dealt with a hard knock derelict kid that literally stabbed another child at school, came back with a dripping knife bloody at home and said, mommy, I'm sorry. I stabbed my friend because she was just speaking so much rubbish. What, what would you do on that day as a mom? Would you pamper that kid because it was born of your womb? Would you comfort that child that everything is going to be all right? Would you go and buy them a new cell phone, clothe them with brand spanking new clothes, buy them new shoes? Would you take them to the restaurant to eat some pizza with their hands still bloody and everything? Would you then afterwards just tell them, please go wash your hands in the bathroom so no one else catches you? Would you cover the sins of that child of yours like nothing at all because it's it's your kid, because you, you, you created that child? It's your own offspring, it's your own progeny. Would there be nothing in you that is indignant? Like, I just, I need to understand that. What would you do with this child if at all that kid was truly yours? Would you not discipline it? Would you not frantically panic? And if at all you wanted to cover the sins of this child who stabbed the friend at school, would you not then basically enter into a contract with your child that if I'm going to hide this thing and basically protect you from getting caught from the police finding this knife that you're bringing to me, there have got to be rules. Like there are things that basically need to happen. First and foremost, you cannot do that again. And secondly, you have got to make sure that you go to this therapist, you see this particular man, you have this intervention staged against you. We go and you, we check your mind, your brain to see what in the world is going on. The only way that as a mother, I'm going to basically conceal your crimes is if I can be guaranteed that I'm not dealing with some serial killer deadbeat child in my house that might even turn the knife on me that might make the rest of my children put them in harm's way. If you could stab your friend at school, would you not stab your sister then? Would you not stab your little brother? You are a psychopathic child. And if at all your mind does not get transformed and you change and you down that knife and you never go back to that deed, frankly, I cannot have you living in my house. I need to have a guarantee that this is not gonna happen again. And if this child cannot award the mom any such guarantee, the mom has every responsibility under heaven to hand that child over to the authorities. To tell on him or her, essentially. The mom, in order to save and protect her other children, has got to hand that child over to the system because that mother herself is not safe for chilling out with that kid. So, I mean, w when you look at that analogy in that way, why would God just embrace you in his loving arms into heaven to go and mess with the rest of his children in the house with you 
having not entered into any contract with him that you're not going to do that again you have not entered into like he can actually hide your sins as far as the east is from the way so too are your transgressions removed from you when you turn your life over to the lord jesus christ but you cannot anticipate that you're going to listen to rayma Koli at rayma telling you that whitney houston died in christ doing a whole sermon speaking about that and then imagine that if whitney could die a junkie then i can die a murderer i can die a destroyer a thief just like the devil even though I look much like my daddy, the devil, I want to believe that God is going to embrace me anyway because you sat under some strange teaching at a strange church that you gathered for yourself, for your itching ears, that then told you that you can commit these atrocities, these abominations, and still enter the kingdom of heaven. It is the Lord's prerogative to rinse us from all the sins we've ever committed, all the grime, all the guilt, all the blood on our hands. The Lord gives himself a prerogative to remove those transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west even on earth that would be bizarre like even the mother just letting her kid get away scot-free with murder or the police system ignoring that this happened that's bizarre for earth's by earth's standards and we're wicked by the earth's standards and yet that is exactly what happens in heaven a holy environment where comprehensive miscreants are completely cleansed and absolved from any crimes that they have committed but there is literally a condition. You have to be born again. And there is no way that you are born again when you are still stealing, killing, and destroying. Literally no way under heaven. We and like to grab the Bible and read it like a pamphlet is irresponsible. We are born again, indeed, not of anything that we have done. God himself is the one that draws us to the Son. The Father draws us to Jesus, so we can't even choose him. It is not of anything that we have done. We go there with flappy hands, like dying fishies us out of the ocean. We love him because he loved us first. There is no initiation on our part. That's the level of love. For he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whomsoever will believe upon him will not perish but have everlasting life. It is not of anything we've done. So please, like, do not mistake me for one that is out here preaching a works-based salvation. Not even a thing. Mm -mm. It is not of any volition of our own. It is all by the grace of God. However, there are evidences that you have received grace. There are conclusions that can be rightly made by Christians upon observing the works of people that a person may or may not be saved truly. Even the scriptures it is written therein that test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Who knows? Lest you should fail. Lest you should fail. Do you understand what I'm saying? We could indeed discover later on that we were called but never chosen. That we've never been in Christ. Just like Demas, we leave because we were never in him. I don't believe anyone can lose their salvation. But I also don't believe anyone can be a Christian. And just roam these streets rolling around like a donut in some chocolate. In darkness. Unfettered. With no discipline. Landing on your back, no rod, nothing. It is written in God's word that he decides, what is this he, um, disciplines those that are his. Do not spare the child the rod. That's an instruction from God to us as human beings through the Proverbs through Solomon. Yeah, well, we are his children and he does not spare us the rod. And so if God is not disciplining you, you are an illegitimate. You are not saved. You are not saved. You are not redeemed by your works. We will admit it. Please do not mistake me for preaching a works-based salvation. I'll say that again. But if you do not have works, you are dead. Faith without works is dead. So if there is no transformation of your person from the date when you chose Christ, honey, you are not born again. I like to use this analogy by Paul Washer, actually. I've told you guys some stories before that he was one of my biggest influences in the beginning of my faith and still to this day, I'm besotted with him. He uses this example to describe to people that they might understand that you're not born again. He speaks of a guy that says that, that, that makes up an excuse. He gets to work late and his boss is like, why are you late? And then he goes on right ahead and explains to the boss that he has just gotten into a vehicle accident with a, 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 a five ton truck or something. And afterwards he had to do ABC and that's why he's late. And the conclusion of the boss on that day would then be either that this human individual that is here late, looking like a regular dude in the office, is either lying or he's lost his mind. He's either lying or he's lost his mind. And then this is the, the, the punchline, the kicker. Okay, he says, you cannot have an encounter with something so gargantuan as a five-ton truck and not be permanently changed. Essentially, that man is supposed to be dead or in hospital. But he's standing in front of the boss claiming that he's late because of that accident. Long story short, you cannot have an encounter with someone so mammoth as God, he is the creator, and not be permanently transformed, not be permanently changed. So if you claim to be born again, and there is no transformation of your life, you are not saved. You are not saved. So how in the world can you 
reason in your mind practicing so much idolatry so much sorcery and the depth of it be so exquisitely evil and anticipate that you are going to be cleansed from you your sins as far as the east is from the west you are an, you're an illegitimate you understand you think that the lord is just going to wipe your, your slate clean on the day when we all get to heaven we are some of us going to have quite the big bone to pick with the fact that that person never agreed with the contract the way that we did we consecrated ourselves to you we strove to enter in for we knew that many on that last day will try to and not be able we stayed on the narrow road that leads to life that few people found we checked ourselves constantly beating our flesh into submission to make sure that our calling and election is certain we worked out our own salvation with fear and trembling we knew that we are saved indeed by faith only by grace by the grace of god however that apart from works there is no faith that there is a holiness without which no one sees god and we trembled before a holy and reverent god recognizing ourselves as fallen sinners and how grateful we were therefore for the propitiation because we fall so violently short always making war with this body of death romans 7 being our main struggle always fighting sin struggling to truly get it right having problems being burdened by it always mourning because you swore mourning because you watched porn mourning because you masturbated you fawning like proper you did strange stuff and you ended up just grieving for like two weeks straight imagining that you can't even stand before god's like struggling to even pray like when you sin you sometimes struggle to get down on your knees and pray because you feel like you're offending god you're a stench but that's when it is written about us in romans 7 that when sin abounds grace abounds ever more because those of us who can like basically feel like we're a stench before god when we approach him because we're sinners he says to us that a broken and a contrite spirit he will not despise that's a contrite spirit you've never gone to god with that contriteness you never you can't possibly rock up with crocodile tears before a holy god of the throne raise your hands singing some emotion spurring up song in church and anticipate that that spiritual move or that emotional move of yours was the tenement of the holy spirit working in you and then you cry in church and then you you imagine that this must mean that you definitely have a relationship with god you're saved i, I wouldn't deny that the holy spirit was there present likely he was because he's been calling you has he not He's been about you, has he not? However, if you're not being convicted of sin, and if at all, after all that crying, snot and drana in the church, sniffling away, you then go back to the drawing board and you do witchcraft again. I'm sorry, you are not saved. You are straddling the fence. You are hovering around, teetering around at the outside, the periphery of the kingdom of heaven, but not entering. You're not coming inside. And so you are shut out. You are locked out. If the Lord should decide to seal the gates of history altogether, you will find yourself in eternal condemnation. If at all the Lord cuts your silver cord and you perish, you will go to hell. Is that basic? Because you bore no fruit. By this men will know you my disciples love one another. How are you loving me? I am a Christian, a professing Christian. Why in the world are you bewitching me to oblivion? You don't love me. Is that basic? By this men will know that you my disciples keep my commandments. Why in the world under heaven? Are you doing this abomination that in the Old Testament it was written of you that suffer the witch not to live? How can you, with any level of conviction, sit underneath that tiresome preaching of some lackluster man that should not be at the pulpit telling you that you're safe only because you said the sinner's prayer and then only quote from ephesians chapter one not of anything that you've done is the free gift of god he is not wrong but my goodness how half a truth that is given that it lacks the remaining context it lacks the remaining context we are not saved by works however absent of works you evidence that you are not saved at all your works evidence your salvation you will know them by their fruit fruit are works love joy peace gentleness kindness long-suffering goodness faithfulness against these there is no law and then the fruits of the sinful nature we know them in galatians 5 as well further down orgies wild parties dissensions envying strivings strife sorcery sexual immorality impurity i could go on things like these when you are walking more in the fruit of the sinful nature rather than in the fruit of the holy spirit honey you cannot imagine you are saying you are not you can't be because you are not bearing the fruit of the one who implores you to be this way and who also helps you along to be that way john 15 if at all you are not bearing fruit you're going to be cut if your words abide in him and his if you abide in him and his words abide in you and you ask for anything in his name he will give it to you so you anticipate then that all of these acquisitions that you have that must be because god got you right you imagine that god got you because you've got a job still while karabo doesn't have one You've got your children and your husband while Karabo doesn't have any such thing. All that jazz without anticipating that it is written also in God's word. That rain falls on both the righteous and the wicked. In one fail sweep, we all harvest at the same time. But then when the wicked go out of the way to pull the rock from underneath the feet of the righteous, making sure that we cannot harvest at harvest season, 
despite the fact that it rained all over the show, what then happens is a miracle on Mount Carmel necessary, is it not? Elijah needs to be raised up because the people of God were out here, continuing to worship Baal with all of that idolatry because they imagine that because it was still raining in Israel, it must therefore mean that gods are with us. They managed to deceive them using the name of God as a means for financial gain. They imagined that their prosperity was equated or tantamounted to their blessedness, therefore in Christ, to their holiness, therefore in Christ, to their propitiated state, therefore in Christ, to essentially their innocence before a holy father in heaven who looks at you and sees the sun. And so therefore he embraces you. You imagine that because it rained and you, you, you harvested crop, that must be the equivalent of you being born again. Except that is a doctrine of demons and let it be anathema, a destructive heresy. Do you understand what I'm saying? That health, wealth and prosperity gospel. Because God made it clear that blessed are you when you are persecuted. Blessed are you when men revile you. Blessed are you when you suffer. When you lose homes, fields, mothers, fathers, everything. For the sake of the gospel, you will gain a hundredfold over all that in this world with persecutions and in the next life, eternal life. Blessedness, according to Psalm 1, is when you walk not on the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but when you delight in the law of the Lord and on his law you meditate day and night. You're like a tree pot planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. And in all that you do, you prosper. Your prosperity is literally equated by your holiness, your justness, you being a righteous man, you caring for the widow and the orphan, you not merely fasting, therefore sacrificing, however, not with any obedience to God. Consecration to the Lord Jesus Christ is about being on the rock. Do you understand? Do you understand? The rock of offense, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. When you are built on the rock, you take the commandments of God and you literally take them seriously. You run with them. You run with them. Hitting the ground running, you are here. Take up your cross every single day and you follow Christ. However, when you have built your house upon the sand, it is written of you that everything beats you down. Indeed, including of false doctrine. False doctrine. It's written of you that you are tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. Everything that somebody tells you, you run with it. Itching ears. As you're following some like strange preachers, comforting you that you're going to heaven when you're headed to hell. He will be burned more healthily than you. However, nonetheless, you still are going to be burned. It doesn't matter just how uh, like excruciating the temperature of heat is in hell. Bottom line is human beings are not to endure. We're not supposed to endure any heat on our bodies that is beyond a certain temperature at all. So it doesn't matter that the devil is going to burn hotter or even your preacher is going to burn hotter. Bottom line is you're going to burn too. You're going to burn. You, there is no way that you are going to heaven. Like, not, not like this. Like, what is going on? What is going on? You are professing Christ. Are you not scared? Why is there no trepidation in you? Have you no fear? Does it not worry you to be in traffic, to get in a vehicle? Does it not scare you to book an airplane flight? Goodness, lest it should crash. Every single day you should be trepidatious. You, be, you should be living on the edge of your seat when you do sorcery, claiming to be a Christian. Because you will be beaten with more blows. Why? Because you are close to the light. You were always in church. After feeling the Holy Spirit of God in the general environment where church folk are at, yet you in and of yourself are unindwelt. In and of yourself are unfilled. In and of yourself you have no one within you dwelling that is actually converting you. He is calling you from without you. But you're not responding appropriately. He stands at the door and he knocks. But you're not allowing him to come in and sup with you, feed you. Feed you that you might not be so emaciated with false doctrine. Right now, you are speaking Christianese and imaginative that you go, like your emotional experience in church is a tenement of your salvation. No hurry, honey. The tenement of your, the thing that evidences that you are born again is your healthy conscience, your guilt, your guiltless conscience. Do you have assurance of salvation? Or are you leaning on the testimonies of other people who have gathered for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching ears want to hear have to say? People comforting you, pampering you that you're okay, even though you look at God like that because you struggle to look him in the eye. You struggle to look him in the eye. You cannot for the life of you with any level of honesty pray to God in a way that is just open about what's going on with you. But you are being comforted by mere mortals. Allow me to help you understand what the scriptures have to say about gathering with a whole bunch of randos to comfort you in what you got to say. The road is broad that leads to destruction and many people enter into it. And those people on the broad road, many of them are professing Christians. They speak Christianese very, 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 very fluently. And they will make you feel as comfortable as your deadbeat pastor will make you feel comfortable that you're going to heaven despite being a witch. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven when you practice that level of idolatry non-stop, wire, wire, to the point of what it is that I saw in my dream and I'm getting to the point. Y'all know I can be long-winding, but I gotta, I guess, fashion some kind of a table before you guys that you might consume rightly what you ought to consume from this dream to see that there is no way that you can visit Asangoma and do this to a person and still be saved. Now, still is the very horrible word to use right now because there's nobody that can ever lose their salvation and be saved. That's what I ought to have said. There is no way you can sit before a sangoma and do especially this kind of spell 
and be saved. I mean, goodness, I can even see the rationale behind a person going to a Sangoma to get a job after a season of struggling to get one, them being self-deceived, self-deluded that they're still saved, that they're saved because they have not actively gone on right ahead to like smack somebody's entire future. They're just trying to help themselves along. But the people who are like saboteurs of note, I, I don't know how you can sit as something in church. And imagine that that's all that you need. You're doing churchianity. You are not doing Christianity. Christianity is about Christ. You're not in Christ. You're not taking up your cross following him. You do not love his disciples. Listen, in Matthew 25, God slaps people out the way, tells them to go to eternal darkness. Why? Because when he was hungry, they did not feed him. When he was naked, they didn't clothe him. When he was thirsty, they didn't give him a glass of water to drink. When he was in prison and sick, they did not um invite, they did not visit him. And when he needed hospitality, they did not invite him in. They did not invite him in. Yeah. So, I mean, when you are going out of your way to grab true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and impoverish them, starve them, leave them out in the cold, dead beat left alone in some state penitentiary with nobody visiting them, when you have participated in the mutiny against true, true, provable Christians bearing fruit, God is going to tell you, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you, you did not clothe me. When I was naked and in prison, when I was, sorry, in prison and sick, you did not visit me. When I needed hospitality, you did not invite me in. When I, etc., etc. And you're going to be like, God, but like, when did I not do that for you? And then he will tell you, you did not do it for Garabo. If anything, she was hungry and you never mind to not feed her, but you actually regurgitated food that was in her stomach that she might not get nutrition. You blocked her from continuing to grow. She was starting a YouTube channel and you rocked up with some witchcraft. She wanted, she was, she was ravenous for children. She was ravenous for love, for respect, for mercy, for fellowship with brethren. She was a human being created in my image over whom I said once, it is not good for man to be alone. And you made her lonely. You made her ravenous with nobody rocking up to feed her. And you expect to enter my rest. She was my child, is my child. And now today you shall be judged by her for we will judge the nations with Christ. That is what you're standing to face. I opened the Bible that you might understand what hot water you find yourselves in right now. I am going to read from Revelation 22. Okay, however, from verse 14, it is written, Blessed are those who wash their robes. Wash of which is the operative terminology at this particular juncture, okay? If you don't wash your robes, you don't get to call yourself a Christian. Washing is a work. However, we are not saved by the washing of our robes. The washing of our robes evidences that we are saved. It is an activity that automatically it is in us. We, we have a desire for it. When we get born again, the Lord gives us his affections. We start to love that which he hate, He loves and hate that which he loves. Therefore, we get fashioned unto his likeness. And if at all we are grubby, since God is clean, we then embark on a process to get all cleaned. We wash ourselves. We repent. That's what I'm getting at. You brood of vipers, be in keeping with repentance. Thus saith John the Baptist. If you do not wash yourself, you cannot anticipate you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. If you are grubby, if you are muddy, if you've got long snake-like nails, you are not going to enter in. If you walk like the serpent, your daddy, the devil, you are not making heaven. No matter how much you do church activity, no matter how much you are all up in religious, it don't matter. Do you understand? Blessed from verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have their right to the tree of life. Yesterday I spoke about human rights, constitutional rights that are being infringed from here to Timbuktu by South Africans who do witchcraft against other South Africans. Yeah. You are taking, you are basically de denying other people the same rights that they have as citizens of your country. Well, your government ought, if, if at all, you are infringing the rights of your fellow man on the left and on the right to do something about it, right? There are courts for that, civil courts as well as criminal courts to deal with your infringements of people's rights, liberties. Yeah, well, I mean, then God is a just judge in a way that earthly judges just aren't. These evil men on earth were even wise enough to create laws that protect everybody. And if people break them, they say, no, you can't do that. So how much more then will a holy just judge apprehend those who take away a holy God that, that, that watches you take away the human rights to the tree of life, to those who have been propitiated for by God? Those of you that are trying to throw me into hellfire, trying to get me to walk away from Christ. Those of y'all who have cursed my soul proper. You can't curse those whom God has blessed, but you've tried to make me walk away from Jesus. I've gotten dreams of some strange men, men in particular, throwing away the word Christian, Christ, the word Christ, just throwing it away. It looked like a, a caption on that I use on, in my videos. And he was just throwing it into some canyon, some abyss, like you're going to throw away Jesus. Then I'm going to infiltrate. That's a person that's properly trying to curse my soul. Archer performing what is otherwise known as Balaam's error. Balaam's error. You can't curse those whom God has blessed. Let a donkey tell you where to get off. 
that's what's good yeah how are you gonna go take away my right to the tree of life seeing as i have actually gotten born again but you don't have a right to it when you are not a citizen of heaven like proper the constitution of this nation applies to people who sojourn this nation when when people are walking around in these south african streets whether or not they are civilians citizens sorry they are covered by the law of the land but the moment you get out of south africa you can't like claim the constitution of the republic of south africa section 108 of 1996 in like brazil they're gonna be like what's well, so that's not our jurisdiction exactly so the moment you leave heaven's courtyards the moments you the moment you you, you extract yourself from a heavenly lifestyle you can forget about being covered by the constitution of heaven with you having a right to life just like in the bill of rights in south africa we've got a right to life but the moment you get out of the country most countries i would believe i would imagine have that uh, right but not every country has a right to a freedom of expression like go to the middle east they won't be actually telling you what like speak on a rooftop and see what's gonna happen to you speak on a rooftop about your rights as a as a, as a woman as a uh, a gay guy yeah no you're gonna know what time it is you, you you're gonna understand eternity in a minute like it's that basic mm. The moment you leave your country, whether or not you are, unless you have diplomatic immunity, uh, but and, uh, and some kind of like status in your nation, unless you're like I said, a diplomat, you can dream on about basically flailing your country's flag to show them that I'm covered by the law of South Africa. Unless you're an embassy in another country, you cannot actually lay claim to the law of that land in another country. They're just gonna diss you and then put you in prison anyway. Put you in prison anyway. Now, since there's no such thing as embassies of hell in heaven. And since there's no such thing as diplomatic diplomatic immunity by citizens belonging to citizens of hell chilling in heaven you just don't get to hang you don't get to stay there it is only those that are covered by the blood of the lamb that have got then the right to eat of the tree of life blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates by the gates enter through the gate for many on that day will try to hop over by, hop over by some other way and they will be cast out they will be they will be basically be burned away from the gate by a goldsmith who is jesus christ the road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it you can't crawl into heaven like a cockroach underneath your door when somebody finds you you're gonna get splattered on the floor somebody's gonna wham you with a swat and then you're gonna know what time it is you cannot encroach upon heaven's gates with all that grime on your body and anticipate that the father's just going to be like oh but my son has covered it all yeah true but you've never embraced the son now have you have you now you have no reverence for jesus that's just the problem you think he's just this meek and lowly dude while he is that indeed he passed away as a lamb but when he comes back he's returning as a lion y'all are playing some pretty dangerous games dangerous but let's continue to read this is where the operative verse comes in now you've understood what what belongs to Garab. I have a right to the tree of life. One day I'm going to consume of it and live forever. However, you, this is why you're outside. In Revelation 22, 15, it is written outside. And I used the one in the book of Revelation. I could have gone to uh, 2 Corinthians. I could have gone to 1 Corinthians. I could have gone to Galatians. I, I could have gone to the Gospels. Speaking about how it is that uh, certain that these kinds of people neither fornicators nor revilers are going to enter the kingdom of heaven but i went to revelation so you can understand that this is the last book of the bible and this is the last chapter of the last book of the bible basically sealing the deal that you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if you are like this just on a loop perpetually this is the, the like god said it over and over again reverberating it in all of the 65 books prior to revelation and in the last chapter of the book of revelation in pretty much the tail end he then says it again to basically help you understand that by the time that people are eating of the tree of life you will be burning for eternity revelation 22 15 outside are the dogs listen to who are called dogs now dogs of which can be paralleled to that scripture in the book of hebrews and also in the gospels where it is written that do not cast your pearls to the pigs nor give what is sacred to what dogs lest they should trample them underfoot and then turn around and tear you to pieces it is also written in the book of hebrews that like a dog returning to eat its vomit or like a pig going back to wash itself in the mire so too does a sinner return to their sins a person who has basically repented or done a better thing for like five seconds return to the maya a lot of y'all have gone back to sorcery precisely because you quit it after your victims plunged broke their noses and their teeth losing eyesight in one eye and then when they looked like they were recovering you then went back to a drink board after years of dropping the wand yeah you're a dog 
returning to your vomit to eat and you are a pig returning to the mire to get cleansed after being cleansed do you understand what i'm saying you are facing the very like a dire risk of crucifying the son of man twice like just do a better thing and repent already the lord describes those who are not entering the kingdom of heaven as dogs in the old testament gentiles were called dogs because we were not children of the promise we then inherited the promise got grafted in according to romans is it 11 yeah in order because of the rebellion of the jews the lord will then go back to fetch them in the tribulation do you understand what i'm saying recover like a mother hen grabbing its chicks and bringing it back to the fold bringing them back into her feathers her pinions the lord will go and restore a remnant of the jews to himself but first the gentiles were grafted in and so we ceased being dogs we stopped being dogs those of us those of us and those of us only who have embraced the cross so essentially everybody that's not a child of the promise is just called a dog like that's how god feels about you when you're not his son or his daughter why do you want to stay in that space given that he is the creator of the universe given that he made heaven and earth given that he said let there be given that he breathed into man and he became a living soul like that is god and you are out you're being called a dog by him how is anyone content with that i mean y'all struggle to get called dogs don't you men struggle every time all men are dogs when we're not complaining they, they hate that terminology because ain't nobody want to be called a dog but god calls you that when you don't really know him hmm. outside are the dogs and sorcerers do you hear that sorcerers sorcerers outside of the dogs basically all of humanity that did not embrace the cross good as dogs sorcerers that's the, like actually you know if i had a highlighter but i don't have anything anymore just i would have highlighted that portion the portion in my bible if i had known how much i would endure witchcraft attacks i would have highlighted anywhere where it is that it spoke about witchcraft because i am so bombarded by it it's ridiculous sorcerers are outside revelation 22 15. you cannot do sorcery and enter the kingdom of heaven i mean whoa <laughs> outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers murderers which is what i'm going to tell you about in the dream that i had just now and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood falsehood do you understand you cannot anticipate that you are going to be cleansed by a holy god welcomed and told well done my good and faithful servant you fought the fight run the race kept the faith when you were just before you passed away essentially hovering over a fire in a ritual and that fire rose up and choked you with all of its carbon monoxide and that's why you died but hey you were in church on sunday plus generally you are a professing christian so he's gonna let you in even though you died in the line of sorcery fire you died in the line of satanic fire you probably were killed because of satanic deeds what is going on over there with your rationale why are you so unintelligent some of y'all are university graduates i do not understand you've got some of the most prolific degrees in this world it was hard to pass them by most but you passed you're that guy and yet you can't grasp something so basic as this then again wisdom comes only with the fear of the lord natural intelligence falls violently short the wisdom of this world is foolishness to god and you are perishing and so therefore you think the wit the the the, the food that the grandness and the holiness of god is foolishness as a man who is perishing until you find out that oh snap it's eternity now and i have got to bow and i've got to confess that jesus christ is lord but much too late i don't understand it like proper go and read revelation 22 14 to 15 over and over and over again as a witch and somehow justify substantiate that you can carry on in this crazy state and be okay in the sight of god now let's just get straight to the dream that i had with my former best friend and some stranger on the internet listen same spell that whole um wasteland uh, um environment that i spoke about representing the one that um uh, barry allen's wife uh, si uh, uh, uh iris was in because of her bereavement with with nora ellen having disappeared from the timeline and what have you yeah i saw guys in that gehenic like it looked like henna like it looked like a barren wasteland but it was not spiritually significant in that hades type form it did not ooze or give the feel of hell it was not hell it was an illegal dump site by occult practitioners and guess what was there this is why i'm so bereft it's why i was so afflicted all day a burned baby a few of them burnt babies charcoal dead Ugh. also burnt cots burnt baby toys little trinkets burnt household ornaments burnt basically the stuff that would make for a picket fence the desire of a woman to have children it, it is likely why it is that god used iris in my dream because iris had lost nora in the timeline and then she went back to this wasteland dump site 
to find a jacket that was memorabilia of Nora. God meshed that image in the flash, in that show the flash, into this dream to help me understand what they're trying to do here. My own former best friend thoroughly came at me again with a flying kick. It was bad enough. She came at my prospects for marriage to a good guy. She messed with that. She wasn't trying to get me to not marry at all. She was just trying to get me to marry badly as she did. But this time around, she came and my heart cry. One of my biggest desires is to be a mom. Y'all know that? I keep saying it. I was saying the other day that uh, I was supposed to be popping babies from the age of 22 all the way up until my mid 30s. I wouldn't have cared to have 18 children. I was that girl. I just wanted to have as many children as I could. A crash. Do you understand? And it is a an egregious travesty that at 39, I am yet to bear any children because of all of this witchcraft. And in my dream, my babies, and never mind mine, but those of many other women, because I understood that it wasn't just one woman's tragedy. It was the tragedy of many women. Babies were burnt, guys. And it was not just, like babies were burnt beyond recognition. They were dead, all of them. They were um, hard, like carcasses. Like, you know, when you burn meat in the oven, how hard it gets. It no longer has that juicy, yeah, malleability to it. It's just like, yeah, you can even break it in half and it'll just snap. The babies were burnt like that. They were burnt. And the things that were burnt next to them were things that belonged to babies, cots toys little thingy you know things that you know when a baby's sleeping it's just kind of rolling like a ring on, on top of the baby entertaining it that was what i i saw in Gehenna. it wasn't Gehenna, please it was not hades it was an, an illegal dump site a place where people threw stuff away that was not supposed to be thrown away and they burned it trying to basically eliminate the evidence but the coals did not fully burn such that you could see what it is that was burning that was burnt, that was killed. You could see that those were the dreams of many women. Those were the desires of many women. Y'all, in the black community, there is a problem, a big fat chunky problem, not so much with fertility or giving birth to babies because we can pop them, okay? But there is a big fat problem with marriage. Black girls are not getting married on time. Men are just making us these baby mamas out of wedlock, not making honest women out of us. They, uh, they there's, there's a lot of um, late 30s, 40s, unmarried never been married single black women who have never had children it's bizarre like in the black community because they have been trying to wait for husbands and one uh, husbands are not coming along and they're basically being told that have a baby with some put with some tycoon have a baby with some semen donor at least you get to use your eggs when this woman is even single at 39 like me because she's been waiting the whole time to do things the right way those of us who insist on waiting to have husbands and then get married we are the mothers of those babies they were all black that's another thing i have to give to highlight there there were no white babies all those babies and they were black there is a problem in the black community and i would go so far as to say it's a global issue black women it's not that we're unmarriable and from what i see in my dreams it's not even that our men are irresponsible to propose marriage to us it's that women are so ridiculous against other women that they are bewitching marriage prospects of their girlfriends and so therefore men are passing us up they're dating us for years on end without marrying us and when then you're christian of course you're not even fornicating at all the babies in that like hellish environment were the babies of many black mothers and their dreams too to basically give birth to a child in a sound happy environment having an ability to afford your way that you might be able to take care of the baby and also being doted over by a loving husband those dreams were burnt they were burnt in that mind dump whatever you want to call it okay but the burning was supposed to consume all of the all of that evidence but the fire was dead already even though the environment was hot you could tell that it had been supernaturally snuffed out that the evidence might not be entirely consumed that these people might be apprehended black women <laughs> maybe that's why i also dreamt of some strange woman on the internet that i don't know you are each other's biggest nightmare. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are each other's most gargantuan nightmare. You are so destructive towards each other's dreams that you're to contribute, to blame for why it is that all you end up being is a baby mama with baby mama drama. The statistics of black people across the world, these men don't marry their women. All they can do is just, can do is just pop babies and have seven different babies by seven different baby daddies without a woman being married. This basically grain, the stereotype of the black community, it appears you have manufactured it. And then you go on right ahead and you blame white supremacy for doing that to you. 
when you're the one that's bewitching your best friend into oblivion to make sure she can't have a baby. You see, in that dream, there was theft, there was murder, and there was destruction just like the devil. None of that can enter into the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how, how much you go to church, how much you're always falling down with kundalini spirits gyrating on the floor, having an epileptic fit in church. Every single time you feel you're feeling the Holy Spirit, I don't know how many times, I don't care how many times you manifest when a man of God comes and prays over you, therefore feeling like you've been delivered. Bottom line is, if you are walking in these filthy deeds, all of your spiritual activity means nothing. It's no different from hypnosis or manifestation or any other of these weird things or Buddhism, kundalini, whatever you want to call it, yoga. It is no different. You're just walking in a spirituality. We shall acknowledge that there are entities operating. There are spirits. However, they're not the Holy Spirit. They're not the Holy Spirit. If you don't have fruit, that's the only thing that makes you Christian. Not your gyrating on the floor, not your church activity, not your Christian knees that is on your tongue. Only Holy Spirit indwelt, walking and living as a living epistle for Christ. When you are bearing fruit, that's the only thing that makes you a Christian. That evidence is that you're Christian. The thing that makes you a Christian is the Holy Spirit's impartation into you to testify with um, the Holy with, the Holy Spirit testifies with God that we are the sons of God. So those of you who feel like, who say that you received the Holy Spirit after you got born again, impossible. The Holy Spirit is he who testifies with God that we are daughters and sons of God. The Holy Spirit is he who is going to magnetize us into the sky like a magnet at the rapture. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not saved. Just say that you got a greater anointing of the Holy Spirit and that's why under heaven you just felt started getting dreams and visions but you have always had the Holy Spirit at the moment of circumcision, at the moment of redemption, at the date of regeneration you got indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The quantity or how close to God you get or how much you feel Him, that is a progression, a, a thing that happens transitionally because it's written in God's word that draw near to God and He will draw near, draw near to you. So the closer you get to God, the more you will feel the Holy Spirit but you have the Holy Spirit at redemption, at redemption. So you can't get filled only after the act with the Holy Spirit. It, um, like the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirits that we are sons and daughters of God. So you cannot be a son or a daughter of God if you're not indwelled. That's the only thing that basically confirms your redemption. And when you have the Holy Spirit, he helps you bear fruit. And when you're not bearing fruit, you therefore evidence you don't have him. Evidencing also therefore that you are not born again at all. At all. You cannot murder so many women's babies and murder so many women's dreams and burn so many women's babies' cots and baby's toys, and milk formula, and little frames in the baby bedroom, and the color pink or blue. You cannot burn all that down in some proverbial dump site and anticipate that you're gonna stand before a holy God and then he's just going to give you a, 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 an apple from the tree of life, a pomegranate, whatever might be the fruit. He's like proper dream on. You are offensive to him. And your prayers are an abomination, a stench. All these years you've been praying, ta 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 ta, in strange tongues he doesn't even understand. That's what's good. It's written in God's word that the prayers of the wicked are like an, a, 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 like a, an, ab they're an, ab an abomination before God. They're a stench up his nostrils. So don't waste your time. Don't even pray. Don't even pray. You don't, you're not even abashed to go ahead and pray to God after doing a spell. Like it's just, it's abominable. I don't understand why you don't feel unsafe. You should feel extremely naked after doing a spell claiming that you're a Christian. Something should be tugging away at you, making you feel excruciatingly unsafe. And if you don't feel unsafe, honey, you are not saved. You're not getting convicted by the Holy Spirit. You're not being disciplined by a father who disciplines his sons and daughters. So therefore you are an illegitimate. I can't say that enough. I hope that I've reached you for crying out loud because this here cannot continue, don't you see? I mean, really, abomination much? Like cease and desist. Stop with all of this nonsense. As for my former best friend going back to drawing board, stealing some babies that have already been stolen, burning some babies that have already been burned, my future is cast in stone. It's written in Psalm 139 that before as yet any of them were to come to pass, all my days were written. So if I am to be a mom one day, there is no amount of ritual where you can burn my unborn babies and actually burn them. No one can speak and have it happen unless the Lord has first decreed it. So it is excruciatingly narcissistic to imagine you can prophesy false prophecies over especially a born again believer. We cannot be cursed. So allow me to be Balaam's donkey at this particular moment and just kick you with my hind legs and let you know that you cannot curse those whom God has blessed. Why are you slapping me silly when you are doing an abomination that's impossible? You are doing an abomination that's impossible. Cease and desist from your wickedness. If you will not, you will perish in your sins thinking that you are going to heaven. And like it is written in John 16 all along, you will have been afflicting children of God thinking you're doing a service to God. Why? Because they will have all in camaraderie with one another, helped you, supported you. Do you understand what I'm saying? To afflict Christians and you then decided that in your group think your hive mentality, that you must therefore absolutely be safe, even though the road is narrow that leads to life that few people find. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cranky. I hope you've been edified. Peace.